Ladies and gentlemen, James Lane here. This is episode 102, 102 of the American Revely podcast. And this is going to be a little different, all right? It's going to be like a quasi deep dive, but I thought it was an important one, even an important one if you have kids or if you're younger, if you're in your 20s and, and you need to understand some stuff about yourself, about work. But uh, when I was watching Tim Cast earlier, um, he had Lieutenant Colonel. Alan West on. Okay. He had, uh, was it Lieutenant Colonel? Maybe it was Colonel Alan West. I don't remember if he got promoted or not. Uh, but I remember him as Lieutenant Colonel's, uh, Colonel at some point. I don't know, whatever. Colonel Alan West was on and he brought up a, a, a piece of writing, an essay. It's kind of like a short book, but it's too short to be a book. And it was written in 1899. All right. And it's called a message uh, for Garcia. It's a message for Garcia or a message to Garcia. A and it's a very, very important. It's a timeless piece of writing. And it speaks of the importance uh, of initiative and of self-reliance in your work and in everything you do. It, it sends a really important message. And if you haven't heard it, if you haven't read it, I'm going to go over it. I'm going to read it with you. We're going to go through it line by line. We're going to talk about it a little because I think it's an important lesson for every hardworking American. American to hear, to learn, to assimilate, to understand. All right, guys. So stay tuned. All right. We're going to get all into the Garcias next on episode 102 of the American Revely podcast. <laughs> oh, my God. I butchered that intro, huh? It's 1899, a message to Garcia by Albert Hubbard. There we go. If, if anybody was unclear by my rambling intro that I screwed up. Listen, guys, this is a really important piece of writing. All right. Came out 1899. It's very important. Uh, I, I liken it to um, if right by Rudyard Kipling. If you haven't read if by Rudyard Kipling, it, it's a really really good one, really good for self-development, really important as a young man or young woman trying to really understand how to accomplish things in life, if is really important one. And a message to Garcia is a really important one. And so I saw it was mentioned, right? They mentioned it on Timcast. They talked about it on Timcast and uh, uh, they weren't going to go over it. They weren't going to read about it. And I figured there was going to be people out there that were curious about it. So screw it. Why not? Let's go over a message to Garcia, right? Let's branch off from, from what they did. Thanks, Tim. I appreciate it. Thank you, Alan West. I appreciate it for, for bringing up the idea, but nobody else is going to do it. So why don't we? Why don't we have this conversation? And let's do something a little different than most episodes. Most episodes, I go on and on and on and on and on, right? And, and, and you get a good 10 minutes of me talking and BSing and whatever before we get to it. Nah, we're not going to do it. We're going to get right to it. Really quick, though, before we get right to it, all right, do me a favor. All right, Gab, if you're on Gab, get on right now. Go to American underscore Reveille. Go into the search bar on Gab, gab.com. American underscore Reveille, R-E-V-E-I-L-L-E. -L -L -E. Find my Gab profile. Hit the subscribe button. Hit the notification bell. All right, do the same on Parlor at the James Lane. Instagram, do the same. American underscore Reveille. Odyssey, O-D-Y-S-E-E dot -E com. It's an alternative to YouTube. You need to get on this alt tech, guys. Do me that favor. Get on there right now. American underscore Reveille. That's for the American Reveille podcast. That's the best place to go and find me. Subscribe to uh, Odyssey and follow me there. Hit the notification bell. All right, guys, I need you to do me that favor. If you're listening on Apple Podcasts, give me that five-star rating and write in a review. Guys guys can't do it without you. The censorship wall is real. It's real. And it is a freaking pain in the you know what. So please help me out there. With that being said, guys, stick around at the end of this so that you can listen to like a two minute ad. It's like two minutes. I put it together. It's about the sponsor of this episode. It's a product that I use that I enjoy. I drink it twice a day, every day. It's a great gentle cleanse. It gets the bloat down, gets the, the toxins out, keeps me feeling light, keeps me feeling empty, keeps me feeling good, healthy, tons of energy. Life change tea, guys. Life change tea. This is some good stuff. All right. Get the tea.com. Get the tea.com. Promo code James, free shipping and handling. Get the tea.com. Promo code James, free shipping and handling. I'm telling you, I've never had a product quite like this that 
doesn't make my stomach hurt. All right. This gives you all the benefits of a daily cleanse without any of the the tummy aches, without any of the issues. Give it a shot. All right. You won't regret it. I promise you. Get the T.com uh, promo code James free shipping and handling. All right. Like I said, stick around at the end and you'll get a couple minutes of a little ad I put together that'll go in a little deeper detail about life change tea. Get the T.com promo code James. All right, guys, let's get into it. 1899. This came out. All right. We're getting right into it. We're getting deep. 1899. All right. Bill and Ted style in the time machine, in the phone booth, uh, back in the day, a message to Garcia, 1899. That was, uh, during, well, 1898, the Spanish American war, right. That ended, but the Philippine American war was happening. If you don't know about that, you should go look it up. The Philippine American war was definitely happening in 1899. In all this Cuban business, there's one man out on the horizon of my memory, like Mars at perihelion. When war broke out between Spain and the United States, it, it was very necessary to communicate quickly with the leader of the insurgents. Garcia was somewhere in the mountain vastness of Cuba. No one knew where. No mail nor telegram message could reach him. The, the president must secure his cooperation and quickly. What to do? Someone said to the president, There's a fella by the name of Rowan will find Garcia for you if anyone can. Rowan was sent for and given a letter to be delivered to Garcia. How, quote, the fellow by the name of Rowan took the letter, sealed it up in an oil skin pouch, strapped it over his heart, in four days landed by night off the coast of Cuba from an open boat, disappeared into the jungle, and in three weeks came out on the other side of the island, having traversed a hostile country on foot and delivered his letter to Garcia, are things I have no special desire now to tell in detail. The point I wish to make is this. McKinley gave Rowan a letter to be delivered to Garcia. Rowan took the letter. He didn't ask, where's he at? By the eternal, where's a man whose form should be cast in deathless bronze and the statue placed in every college of the land? It, it is not book learning. Young men need nor instruction about this and that, but a stiffening of the vertebrae, which will cause them to be loyal to a trust to act promptly concentrate their energies, do the thing to carry a message to Garcia. All right. When they say stiffening of the vertebrae, they say, you know, strengthening of the back, thickening of the skin, thick, thickening of the resolve. You see where I'm coming from? General Garcia is dead now, but there are other Garcias. All right. That that's an analogy, right? That's, that's kind of like a comparison statement. General Garcia, that Garcia is dead, but everybody has a Garcia, right? No man who has endeavored to carry out an enterprise where many hands were needed, but has been well nigh appalled at times by the imbecility of the average man, the inability or unwillingness to concentrate on a thing and do it, slipshod assistance, foolish inattention, dowdy indifference, and half-hearted work seem the rule, and no man succeeds unless by hook or crook or threat he forces or bribes other men to assist him, or mayhap God in his goodness performs a miracle and sends him an angel of light for an assistant. You, reader, put this matter to a test. You are sitting now in your office. Six clerks are within call. That's easy to be confused by, but it's easy to understand, guys. Listen, no man who has endeavored to carry out an enterprise where many hands were needed, but has been well nigh appalled at times by the imbecility of the average men, the inability or unwillingness to concentrate on a thing and do it. All right. What they're saying is that every person who has been in a leadership position, right, and have had to work with people and have had to employ people, uh, they are absolutely amazed by the fact that there are many people out there, right, that just can't get the crap together. Look, I, I, I've been even guilty of it, right? Like I, these podcasts that I'm recording right now, I wanted to record these eight hours ago. 
right? It took me eight hours to, to beat the resistance, to beat my own personal demons, to get my butt in the chair and make it happen, right? But the person that makes it happen is the person that reaps the reward. That's, that's really what it is. At the end of the day, your effort sows your reward. If you sit around and do nothing, nothing will ever happen. If you bust your ass, at least there's a chance something will happen. All right. And the person that goes out there takes initiative and solves the problem, they will reap the award, ladies and gentlemen, but you're going to have to fight yourself. Everybody has to fight themselves. There's a lot of people out there that just won't do it. Are you going to be somebody that can't do it? Or are you going to be somebody that figures it out? That's a question you have to ask yourself. And what they're saying is that there are many people like that, right? But no man succeeds, right? No man succeeds, becomes a success unless by hook or crook or threat or forces or bribes to get other people to, to assist him. Or maybe a miracle happens. Maybe they win the lotto, right? Maybe something happens, but, but, but you have to make things happen. That's what that, that, that is basically saying there. There's a lot of people that don't make things happen. And there are people that do make things happen. And the people that make things happen are the people that win. And now at the end, it puts you in a scenario, in a situation where you're now sitting in your office, six clerks within call. So you have six people around you. All right. Summon anyone and make this request. Please look in the encyclopedia, I guess that would be Google these days, or DuckDuckGo, and make a brief memorandum for me concerning the life of Correggio. Will the clerk quietly say yes, sir, and go to the task? On your life, he will not. He will look at you out of a fishy eye and ask one or more of the following questions. Who was he? Which encyclopedia? Where is the encyclopedia? Was I hired for that? Don't you mean Bismarck? What's the matter with Charlie doing it? Is he dead? Is there any hurry? I shan't I bring you the book and let you look it up yourself? What do you want to know this for? And I will lay you. And that's true, right? Think about this before I keep reading. Isn't that true? Right? I've even been guilty of, of asking so many questions, right? And bugging the crap out of leadership when I should just take initiative and make it happen. And the reward would be so much greater. The trust and reputation that you gain, the personal reliability, the personal reputation, the social structure that you gain is, is, is priceless, is absolutely priceless. But instead, we run our mouths. We ask these questions. We go on and on and on and on and on. Right. There, there are plenty of lazy people. There are people that 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 have an inability to get things done and, and live in a world of pointless details. But is that just a disguise for laziness? Right. And the people that succeed, they're the ones that root these people out and find the folks that will make things happen, get things done, because no one is an island. Nobody can do these things themselves. If you're going to be successful in business and leadership in your family and anything, you are going to have to surround yourself with the best people possible, plain and simple, right? When, when you have big deficiencies in your family and things are falling apart in certain areas, you have to ask yourself, are the best people possible here? And then if not, if those people like in your family have certain issues, you can at least identify who and what and where these issues are coming from. You can work on ways to avoid them yourselves. You can work on ways to help those people become better people. There, there are all different types of solutions to things. But until you do the analysis and get down to the nitty gritty, you won't know. Really tell I've studied leadership studies, right? <laughs> Look, guys, people are going to question things. And then there are going to be people that just make things happen. I'm sure by now you've had experience with both. And I'm sure by now you know you are either one or the other. Or you're like me, who is somebody who gets things done, but is also a horrible procrastinator. I make all my deadlines, I get everything done, but I torture myself by not doing it until the last minute. And then I'm miserable and I, you know, basically almost hang myself and then finally get it done and then still succeed. But at what cost? I could have just spread it out over a couple of weeks and everything would have been fine. But no, that's not me. I guess I'm a glutton for punishment. All right, let's keep reading. And I will lay you 10 to 1 that after you have answered the questions and explained how to find the information and why you want it, 
the clerk will go off and get one of the other clerks to help him try to find Garcia, and then come back and tell you there is no such man. Of course, I may lose my bet, but according to the law of average, I will not. What, what he's saying is that after you went through all that crap, he'll go and do the lazy thing anyway, right? He'll go and just ask somebody anyway, even if that person did help him find the information and he did find it, right? He didn't have to ask all those questions. He still would have just went and asked that guy, saved all that time. It's a waste of energy. Now, if you're wise, you will not bother to explain to your assistant that Correggio is indexed under the C's and not in the K's, but you will smile sweetly and say, never mind, and go look it up yourself. What's the point, right? What's the point of wasting all that time when you have stuff to do? This incapacity for independent action, this moral stupidity, this infirmity of the will, this unwillingness to cheerfully catch hold and lift are the things that put pure socialism so far into the future. If men will not act for themselves, what will they do when the benefit of their effort is for all? A first mate with knotted club seems necessary, and the dread of getting the bounce Saturday night holds many a worker in his place. Folks, listen, what they're saying is socialism, doing everything uh, for the good of the community will fail because so many people out there can't even do it for themselves. So what's going to happen when you take all initiative and motivation away? A first mate with a club is necessary. Somebody uh, 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 to, to tell the workers to get this crap done, somebody to push people is necessary right? And people not getting paid, people getting fired, people uh, getting kicked out of their apartment, people uh, uh, ri having real risk in their life, taking real chances, right? Uh, knowing that if they don't pay their rent, they could be homeless. That keeps the ball rolling, keeps people, for a lot of people, striving for better things. It's necessary. Socialism, taking all of that away, removing that from the workers, accepting the, the stupidity, right? How does that help it makes people worse it makes people worse because it takes the danger out of their lives ladies and gentlemen advertise for a stenographer and nine out of ten who apply can neither spell nor punctuate and they don't think it's necessary to do so can such one write a letter to garcia you see that a bookkeeper uh, said the foreman to me in a large factory you see that bookkeeper excuse me you see that bookkeeper said the foreman to me in a large factory. Yes, what about him? Well, he's a fine accountant. But if I'd send him uptown on an errand, he might accomplish that errand all right. And on the other hand, he might stop at four saloons on the way. And when he got to Main Street, he'd forget what he'd even be sent for. Can such a man be entrusted to carry such a message to Garcia? Uh, uh, you can now see that Garcia is now being used as an analogy for all of these different situations uh, for a task. Can you entrust this person with a task? Can you entrust this person to do the right thing, to get something done, to get the job done, get it done right, to be proficient, to earn that reputation, to earn their stripes, to move up and do it the right way? Can you trust them? With a lot of people, the answer is no, especially these days when we're living in literal idiocracy. It's true. We have recently been hearing much maudlin sympathy expressed for the downtrodden denizen of the sweatshop and the homeless wanderer searching for honest employment. And with it all often go many hard words for the men in power. All right. Think about this. This is written 1899. All right. They're talking when they say downtrodden denizen of the sweatshop, they're talking uh, for their time. We can put that to our time as low wage worker. Right. And we can say homeless wonder searching for honest employment. Uh, we can say the homeless people that aren't the majority, which are basically mental illness cases and drug addiction problems uh, that are being fed uh, by government programs in blue cities. OK, you can relate these things to today. You really can. Nothing is said about the employer who grows old before his time in a vain attempt to get frowsy, uh, never do wells, never do wells uh, to do intelligent work and his long, patient striving with help that does nothing but loaf when his back is turned. All right. What they're saying is that nobody ever gives any credit to the employer 
that that grows old before his time that, that has a heart attack from the stress that gets wrinkly that gets gray uh that that literally uh stresses himself out uh to to wit's end in attempt to get the lazy uh workers to not be so lazy to get dumb people to do smart things all right and then they they talk crap about him when his back is turned and that's true to this day that happens to many employers and it's possible we've been people that have been the employees in that situation these days. In every store and factory, there's a constant weeding out process going on. The employers constantly sending away help that have shown their incapacity to further the interests of the business, and others are being taken on. No matter how good times are, this sorting continues. Only if times are hard and the work is scarce, the sorting is done finer. But out and forever out, the incompetent and unworthy go and that's what they're saying they're saying that in successful businesses the incompetent the crappy people the people that can't get the letter to garcia the self-starters need to go they have to go in order for you to be successful those people need to be pushed out of your life pushed out of your work pushed out of business if you're the employee you can do that in personal ways if you're the employer you can do that in big ways but it's a truth it's an absolute truth. It is the survival of the fittest. Self-interest prompts every employer to keep the best, those who can carry the message to Garcia. I know one man of really brilliant parts who has not the ability to manage a business of his own, and yet who is absolutely worthless to anyone else because he carries with him constantly the insane suspicion that his employer is oppressing or intending to imp uh, oppress him. He cannot give orders, and he will not receive them. Should a message be given to him to take to Garcia? His answer would probably be, take it yourself. I can compare that line right there to all the Antifa people and the certain sects of BLM people that are Marxist and brainwashed. All right. See, these groups are very smart. You should listen to Andy Noe's new book, guys. Uh, uh, they're decentralized. So there's a lot of Antifa and there's a lot of BLM that don't realize that it's a, a Marxist thing going on. So they're marching and being peaceful while there are other parts of those groups out there burning buildings down and hurting people. Right. So they can't be held accountable because there's no central command. They're all broken up so they can basically go, well, that wasn't our fault. And then the other point uh, group can point to the other and go, oh, it wasn't our fault. They did it. Ha, ha, ha. You know, there's no accountability. They're, they're, they're literally structured in a way that lets them get away with mur literal murder. All right. So I relate that line right there to, to BLM and Antifa. I really do. Uh, thought, uh, tonight, this man walks the streets looking for work, the wind whistling through his threadbare coat. No one who knows him dare employ him, for he's a regular firebrand of discontent. He's impervious to reason, and the only thing that can impress him is the toe of a thick-soled number nine boot. They're talking about a guy who basically can't get the job done, and he's, uh, and this is 1899, so don't, you know, don't get all pissy. There's no OSHA back then. But this guy is a piece of, a piece of work. He can't get the work done. He doesn't like to take orders. He doesn't, uh, 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 he can't manage anything. He can't get a task completed. And yet we're expected to employ him. And all they're saying is the only thing that can make him act is his ass getting kicked by somebody. And there are people out there like that. They're burning down a lot of cities right now. All right. So why should we pay for them? Why should we employ them? Why should they be given taxpayer dollars? I, that's the whole thing. The left wants to literally create a, a free world for unemployable people that can't even act like honorable human beings in public. They, they, they can't even act respectable, you know? You can't conduct yourself with respect. Why should I hire you? And the government, the left, they want to force you. They want to force you to pay somebody to sit there and, uh, and, and, and literally screw off all day. That's not the person who's going to build the reputation, that's going to build the business, that's going to find success. If you ever are going to cash the lottery ticket of success, riches, and wealth, you're not going to get it through laziness and discontent. You're going to get it through hard-ass work. You're going to get it uh, through being able to deliver the message to Garcia, ladies and gentlemen. Of course, I know that one so morally deformed is no less to be pitied than a physical cripple, but in our pitying, let us drop a tear, too, 
for the men who are striving to carry on a great enterprise, whose working hours are not limited by the whistle, and whose hair is fast turning white through the struggle to hold in line dowdy indifference, slipshod imbecility, and the heartless ingratitude, which, but for their enterprise, would both be hungry and homeless. What they're saying is, while the left, and this is how I compare it, or whoever back then was was the the one, but while people are crying for 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 these people that can't be employed and for homeless people and and for all the 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 the, the welfare cases that the left wants to support, for everybody that's crying for them, nobody is shedding a tear for the business owner that literally works a hundred hours a week. That employs people, lets them work their 40 hour week, but they work 100, 200 hours a week to make their business rise from the ashes to rise. through. Now, look at all the business owners that survived during COVID that have been working 200, 300 hour weeks, insane, just insane hours just to keep their businesses alive to get through this. They don't require that of other people. That's on themselves. Nobody ever thinks of those people. And while while they don't think of that, we create safe spaces for people to do heroin in the streets of Seattle and Portland, Oregon. It, it's it's absolute ass backwards. Uh, but but obviously the same stuff was going on then and it's going on now. It's going on now. All right. Have I put the matter too strongly? Possibly I have. But when all the world has gone a slumming, I wish to speak a word of sympathy for the man who succeeds, the man who against great odds has directed the efforts of others, and having succeeded finds there's nothing in it, nothing but bare board and clothes. What they're saying is that for people who are pushing and, and busting their butt to become successful, uh, when there's a world out there where everything is given to everybody and nobody cares anymore that you've busted your ass and you've worked hard and there's no employers, uh, employees, excuse me, that that really get their job done and do it right. And you find that it's all just fake. It's all just phony when you get there. It, it's it's disheartening. It's going to be disheartening, they're saying. And and. and I'm one of those people that are striving to succeed, that have started businesses and failed, that works a full-time job, that goes to school full-time, that has this business that works 40 extra hours on top of my 40-hour work week uh, that I have at my regular job and even beyond that, that skips meals and skips family events to make the American Reveille and the American Reveille podcast be something successful. And it is disheartening. It is frustrating to see all of the people that literally uh, just, just float through life while I'm clawing my way through the mud and the blood and the thick, the bush and the desert to, to, to get to some peak of something that I know is real, but, but I, and I can taste it, but I've just, I'm just not there. And when I get there, will it be all board and clothes? Will it be all labor and no reward? I'll have to find out. But the, the real test is if you'll stop, if you'll keep going, if you'll be able to keep bringing letters to Garcia again and again and again and again, ladies and gentlemen, that's how you do it. That's how you find success. I've carried a dinner pail and worked for day's wages, and I've also been an employer of labor, and I know there's something to be said on both sides. There's no excellence, per se, in poverty. Rags are no recommendation, and all employers are not rapacious and high-handed any more than all poor men are virtuous. All right. My heart goes out to the man who does his work when the boss is away, as well as when he's at home. And the man who, when given a letter for Garcia, quietly takes the missive without asking any idiotic questions and with no lurking in intention of chucking it into the nearest sewer or of doing aught else but deliver it, never gets laid off, nor has to go on strike for higher wages." Civilization is one long anxious search for such just or for just such individuals. Anything such a man asks shall be granted. His kind is so rare that no employer can afford to let him go. He is wanted in every city, town, and village, in every office, shop, store, and factory. The world cries out for such. He is needed and needed badly. The man who can carry a message to Garcia. And if you felt that, 
If that gave you goosebumps, then you might be somebody who carries letters to Garcia yourself, just like me, just like many people that listen to this show. All right. This is a very important reading. This is a very important message. All right. People like that are not appreciated a lot and they end up in interesting situations. They end up not appreciated. They end up uh, 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 in, in, in situations where it seems like they're battling uh, odds that, that are just unmeasurable and, and, and just unbeatable. But those people, those unappreciated few in the world, they're the ones that change the world. They're the ones that will save this country from the Marxist leftist ideology. And they won't be appreciated. Eventually they will. But while it's happening, all of them, everybody, I'll even include myself, we'll all leave our mark and we'll all do what we do to change the culture back to the right direction. But we do that by bringing letters to Garcia. All right. If you're wondering in your life how to be more successful, if you're wondering how to better yourself, if you're wondering how to get to the next level, if you're wondering how to do bigger things, how you can help in, in this great struggle against the leftist ideology, look no further than the letter to Garcia. Look no further. All right. The last paragraph is him pitying that man because he's in such high demand. At the end of the day, the disgruntled kid, they'll go, oh, look, threat detected. Excuse me, I'm getting hackers are attacking me. Say, I get this like a couple times a week. People try to break into my computer and hack into the American Reveille and shut us down and screw up our website and I'll F them. Kick bricks. Get out of here. What was I saying? Uh, in the last paragraph, he's saying he's pitying the man. They're not, they're, the person that, that gets their stuff done, doesn't ask stupid questions and solves problems, is self-reliant, right? Has that resolve to go out there and make things happen, even when it seems impossible. That's the person that will succeed. That's the person that's going to make it in this world, whether it's getting promoted at work, whether it's in life. You have to go out there and build that reputation, earn your stripes, shovel the dirt, all right? Pay your dues and build it up. Trust me, all right? If you're younger and you're listening to this, all right, and you're inspired by this, I promise you it's true, all right? If you go out there and earn your stripes and you bring these letters to Garcia, you act consistent in your life. All right. You complete your tasks. You don't bitch and moan. You can gripe here and there if you're doing the hard work. I've always griped a little bit. It's, it's in my personality. But, but if you really solve problems for people, you will always be in demand and you will always find a pathway to the next step, to the next level. All right. If you have kids, guys, all right. If you have teenagers, read them this, show them this episode. It's important. It's important to understand the difference. All right. Those lazy people, those people that can't get a work done, can't get a task done, that procrastinate, but then don't actually get the job done. They're the ones marching right now and burning cities down. They're the brainwashed ones that don't know why they're doing what they're doing, but they're manipulated because they have no purpose. All right. Find your purpose. Get your letter to Garcia. It's episode 102 of the American Reveille podcast. And I really, really hope you liked it. I hope you'll leave me feedback in the comment section below or email me directly at jameslane at americanreveille.com. If you're really good at WordPress, if you want to be a writer or a blogger for the American Reveille, or if you know digital art like the back of your hand and you have some really good ideas, marketing, stuff like that as well, email me, jameslane at americanreveille.com or go to www.americanreveille.com revelly.com and hit the contact form guys also please help me out if you can go to www.americanrevely.com hit the support us tab leave a little donation all right go to paypal leave a little donation all of these marketing plans we have for the street team and the different multifaceted attacks to get past this censorship wall they're going to cost us thousands of dollars and i have some put together already but it's all coming out of my pocket so if you could help i would greatly appreciate it the fans of this show would greatly appreciate it and i'm excited to show you the expansions that are coming in the near future so please help us out american Reveille.com. Hit the support us tab. All right. Hit the donate. You can donate. Uh, there's barcodes there and all kinds of stuff. If you do the crypto thing, 
But if you would really like to, just go to PayPal. It's right there on AmericanRevely.com in the Support Us tab. And you can donate $5, $10, $100, $1,000. Anything helps, but it's all going to wake patriots up. That is what we are here to do. We are here to empower. We are here to enlighten. We are here to entertain. We are here to wake you up up all right guys please stick around all right just for a couple little minute thing that i put together at the end of this it's going to show like i said earlier about life change tea get the t.com promo code james really good stuff stick around at the end watch that if you're on gab follow me there american underscore revely same as instagram american underscore revely odyssey o-d-y-s-e-e american underscore revely at the james lane on parlor everything's in the description section below you can find it all there and i want to thank you so much from the bottom of my heart for watching episode 102 of the american revely podcast tell everybody about it and i will see you in episode 103 bye Ladies and gentlemen, James Lane here, and I want to tell you about Life Change Tea. That's right, Life Change Tea. I have a pack of it right here. Listen, as many of you know, I've been working really, really hard to get back in shape, okay? I, I, I was thinking lately, right? And, and you should probably be thinking about it too. With how crazy everything is, with how unstable the government seems, with all of these socialists, all of this leftist insanity you would just call insanity who knows when the hell i'm gonna have to run or when i'm gonna have to i, I don't know save my family from something i don't know so I, I was getting fatter and fatter and fatter feeling crappier and crappier and crappier my diet was junk i started by cleaning up the diet i've been working out more and more but i was still bloated i was still gassy i was still feeling crappy and i finally decided to to pull out an old trick in the book all right something that i used for weight loss in the past and it, it, I was thinking about a cleanse right maybe take something that would help me evacuate my bowels a little bit if you know what I mean but you know what I found what I found was something different I found life change tea all right www.getthetea.com I found this life change tea and instead uh, of a seven day or a 14 day cleanse a three day cleanse what they were offering was a daily a, a tea like a daily delicious iced tea not not some kind of weird hot tea or some kind of uh, a nasty tasting thing no this was a, a health supplement all right i started reading about it and and they were talking about all these herbs these ancient herbs right this look at this organic blessed thistle herb malva leaf organic marshmallow leaf i didn't even know what the heck a marshmallow leaf was apparently it's for uh, anti inflammatory inflammatory and antioxidants and stuff. I looked some of this stuff up. It's crazy. Uh, 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 milk thistle extract that cleans your liver and kidneys. I mean, there's all these different things in here, but I was happy. I was attracted to it because it was all natural. It was put together in the U.S., right? Obviously, they've got to get spices from these very special places. Not spices, but, you know, these, these special herbs. They got to get them from special places around the world, but it's all done here. It's packaged, put together, and blended accordingly right here in the U.S., Day, all right and i tried it and it was delicious look at this i'm old school i fill a jug you see this big jug right here and for those listening uh over there on apple Podcasts and spotify and everything like that i'm holding this big gallon jug that used to be full of water see those tea bags floating in the bottom there this was full guys but i've been drinking it every day twice a day eight ounces take a listen pour it in the glass Oh yeah, that's not a sound effect. That's real. Look at this. Cheers, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, mabuhay to all my Filipino friends out there. Mm. I have the mint flavor. It's actually really good. I really like it. It's yummy. Look, this stuff's good. I can take that right now. I'm gonna do two hours of podcast recording after this. It's not like me drinking that's gonna send me running to the back. It's gentle, it's good stuff, all right? So it's got all these herbs, they cleanse you out. I make you regular again. They clean the toxins out of your system. They help you uh, clean the extra waste that's been stored up in the colon, the stuff that's not healthy for you, not good for you. It keeps the bloat down. I don't feel so swollen. You know how you feel like swollen sometimes? Your fingers are, yeah, you don't feel like that. It's gone. It's absolutely gone. So it's good stuff, guys. Listen, you have to go to 
getthetea.com. G-E-T-T-H-E-T-E-A.com. www.getthetea.com. www.getthetea.com. Promo code James, folks. Promo code James. That'll get you free shipping and handling. It's not expensive. It's good stuff, all right? It helps maintain your health. It cleanses your body from all kinds of toxins, all kinds of things that can cause colds and flus and different things like that. It keeps the bugs out real good. Uh, uh, it, it, it helps your digestion. All right. Just like I've been saying, my bloats, I feel so much better, guys. I feel so much better. And just in this journey that I'm taking to get back in shape, I really feel like it's helping me immensely. It really is. I really think so. So try it out, guys. Life Change Tea. You just saw me drink a bunch of it. You just saw my almost empty jug. That's, by the way, like the third jug. All right. That's not the first jug, not the first jug at all. Trust me. It's good stuff, guys. You're not going to be disappointed. You're going to thank me. All right. www.getthetea.com. www.getthetea.com. Get your life changed to use the promo code James free shipping and handling. Thanks, guys.